The trees blurred together as Barney drove further along the lane. All of a sudden, from the corner of his eye, Barney saw a flash of light. He continued driving down the lane when all of a sudden his heart smashed against his chest Ooh. and he squeezed. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> Your arteries are fucking blocked. <laughs> Barney's skin turned to ice as he swung his body around and came face to face with the woman he had seen in the dark trees minutes before. I'm so cold, the woman said. I got lost trying to get home. I just want to go home. Do you know what? Now I'm reading out loud. It feels a lot more sexy. That's a good story. I like it. I haven't it. finished it. Oh, <laughs> Hello, Hello and welcome, welcome to, to Ghost Hunts. Hunts. I'm Susie Priest. I'm Hannah Bichkovsky. And together, we're going to get haunted so you don't have to. Love it. Perfect. Perfect. We're going to be telling some scary stories on episode two. Welcome. Episode two. Can't believe we've got this far. Uh, we, it's a hurdle, We've come a real it? long way. I'm proud of you. Nearly drank your coffee then, again. Get the fuck off my eggnog latte, bitch. <laughs> Look how big it is. <laughs> it's as big as in your mine. fucking head. It is. It's huge. Um, mm. Oh, that was a nice noise, wasn't it? It's got four shots of espresso in that. Huh? That's my iced latte mm. in November. <clears throat> You're a crazy girl. I go against the grain. The grain. <laughs> I don't do <laughs> the what The grape and the grain. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? No, apparently um, <laughs> it's like an Irish thing. And they say you can't um, mix the grape and the grain, or that you can. I, I can't remember how it goes, but like the grape is wine, the grain is beer. Oh, I see. I was going to say, if you're going to bring something up, make sure you've got all the facts there. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> wow. Okay, savage. <laughs> right, Susie Poozy. That was. <laughs> That's disgusting. Is that my new nickname? I was trying. To... Okay, Susie Poozy. That was trying out a nickname. Okay, Hannah Spanner. <laughs> that is so unoriginal. Just say so you now. Hannah. Hannah Wanker. Spanner. Hannah. All right, Hannah Wanker. <laughs> there. All right, Susie Massive Cunt. <laughs> oh, I'm brilliant. Uh, how have you been? How's your week been? Um, good, I got another piercing in my earlobes. Oh my god! Yeah, uh, I felt like a real brave girl. Have you got, are you going to get star sign earrings? Yeah, I'm a Virgo, virgin, <laughs> and um, maybe I will. Mm. Yeah, I've got um, I got two studs put in, right. and I was very scared, but um, I did it. And big I feel, girl. Yeah, I'm a big girl. Great, right, I'm a big girl. <laughs> Jesus Christ! You sounded like um, what's that thing I've asked? Fat bastard. <laughs> I'm a big girl. I'm a big girl. Love it. And we had a nice little gig together last night, didn't we? Did a nice we, little gig. We did a lovely gig last night. Yeah. In a warehouse. In a yeah, like a brewery. Beautiful. It was really nice. There was a dog that blanked you. There was a really horrible dog. There was a man uh, oh, yeah, talking the, about having sex with his daughter, which was a bit odd. It was. <laughs> Bonnie it, was like, <laughs> "Sounds like my kind of gig. <laughs> you <Yeah>, perverse." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was a weird. It was a, a weird setup, but it was a lovely room. Yeah, it was good. I enjoyed it. Um, okay, shall we get into some fucking spooky shit or what? I think we should. But um, you know how last week yeah. I brought um, some parsley to ward off any evil spirits. Oh my god! Yeah. Um, I didn't get a chance to go into Sainsbury's today, but I do have something um, which um, oh, is what, based. What in that science. bag has been through some shit, hasn't it? <laughs> no, really. It's disgusting. Christ. Look at it. It's like so ratty. Oh, it's got a sharpie in it. Um, God. Now that is a big block of Himalayan rock salt. <laughs> right? Oh, look, this is starting again. Look. <laughs> now listen, it's disgustingly wrapped in that cling film. Um, but don't you think that you see salt circles around people when they don't want spirits around them? Yeah, famously, spirits always um, hate seasoning. <laughs> hate Very kind. And apparently this one's really good for you. They really are concerned about their cholesterol. Yeah. And sodium levels. So I'm glad you've bought that, actually. Because yeah. <clears throat> I think that I'm going to be doing the thing at the end this time, aren't I? Oh, are you? Oh, I've got I've got a little game oh. for you. <sighs> but if you wanted to haunt me... No, 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 because you got haunted last week, didn't you? Well, have you? Have you had any weird experiences since, since we... Um... Yeah, to be fair, I actually did. So when I was walking into London Bridge, yeah. I heard this, like, mad, like, piano music. Like, someone really fucking going for it. And I had my headphones on, so I was like, I took it off to be like, okay, someone's really going going for it, like a busker or something. And I took my headphones off, and it was just someone singing Ed Sheeran. 
what? <laughs> yeah, what and mean? I was like, where's the piano music coming from? And it had gone. Well, is it not one of those pianos that they have in stations? Yeah, but where? I, as soon as I took my headphones off, gone. It was like it was in my head. That's weird, isn't it? I'm no. glad you did that, actually, not me. That's fucked up. Yeah. Is that Bloody Mary? Yeah, probably. What is that? But it sounds nice. Like, she's, that's a nice thing to do. We never actually discussed what Bloody Mary means. We just... <clears throat> I don't <clears throat> really know, to be honest. The amount of research I've done in this podcast is minimal. Minimal. Yeah. I don't know who she is, but anyway, that that was something creepy that happened. So maybe she is coming for me Fuck. vis-a-vis a piano. But you've got your Himalayan rock salt. Yeah. that's for At home, the... do you, like, grate it off to use in food? So that's or... what you're supposed to do, but... Um... That is the most basic bitch Isn't thing I've it? ever seen. I know. I was giving it... Because you were at a dinner knows. party with the cheese grater. Yeah. <laughs> salt. <laughs> just a fucking sort of what? Yeah, and I have only one of those, you know, those big graters. So oh, yeah. <laughs> you, get, you get real big. The tower grater. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The official name, mm. I Is believe. That what it's called? Yeah, so if any tower grater companies want to sponsor us, we are completely and utterly desperate and we'll take anything. So yes, please. please get in touch. Um, So shall we crack on with... Let's do a story. Scary stories. Okay, Um, who wants to go first? <laughs> Let's do a story. Um... I don't mind, shall I go? Yes. Okay, you want, you wanted that to happen, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I have... There's a little surprise here, Barney, uh, because the main character in this story... Oh, God. ...is called Barney. Hey. Oh, my God. Can you believe? Oh, I can believe. I, I can't believe. <laughs> Be excited, but it's going to freak you this out is more. It's going to make me look horrible, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's gonna, it probably will scare you a bit more. Oh, okay. Because it's... you. I, well, I imagine you throughout this whole story, <laughs> to be honest. I haven't really quite got it out of my head, so... Okay, <clears throat> <clears throat> the story this week is called The Black-Eyed Woman. Oh, shit. <laughs> you excited? I'm aroused. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. Mm-hmm. Barney was riding home on his motorbike from having dinner with his friends on a very cold December night. It was about one o'clock in the morning and the wind was biting at his face as he whipped down a dark country lane. Barney's lights were on full and his eyes were intently on the road, but he could feel he was getting tired and bored from navigating the dark lanes. He was freezing, even with <laughs> his leather jacket and trousers on. <laughs> Barney, do you have a leather jacket and trousers? You uh. dirty bat. <laughs> <laughs> Barney carried on driving, thinking of his warm flat and the hot bath he would run as soon as he walked through the door. Oh. Do you like a bath, Barney? This is like, I, I this is like the beginning bath. of a porno. <laughs> I can't afford a bath. Do you know what? Now I'm reading out loud. It feels a lot more sexy than this I... is like a sexy story, isn't yeah. it? Like he's in his Vaguely leathers. uncomfortable here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is going to get so much worse. <laughs> this is just erotica. Um, <clears throat> okay, Bonnie had one more lane to turn down before he was almost home. Grey Hill Lane. It's a spooky fucking lane, isn't it? Yeah. The lane was narrow and lined with trees. The foliage either side of the road was thick and pitch black, hinting at the deep forest through which the lane meanders. Oh. Barney could see the trees momentarily as he passed, with the aid of his headlight before leaving them behind in the dark. Barney slowed the motorbike and made the turn. The weather seemed to turn colder as he breathed. He felt his chest turn to ice as the temperature plummeted even further. Are we are we feeling mm-hmm. we're feeling creepy? Good. The trees blurred together as Barney drove further along the lane. All of a sudden, from the corner of his eye, Barney saw a flash of light. He quickly shook it off. An unexplained peripheral image, perhaps. A trick of the light. He did not give it much thought. Until he saw it again. Oh, God. You look real scared. I, I am. Until he saw it again. This time, the flash was to his right. He continued driving down the lane when all of a sudden his heart smashed against his chest. Ooh. And he squeezed. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> much. Arnie's really unwell. Cool. An ambulance. <laughs> is about to have a cardiac arrest. <laughs> It's, it's all the eggnog latte. Yeah. Barney's not having too salt. much Himalayan salt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is real bad. Your arteries oh. are fucking blocked. <laughs> okay. All of a sudden, his heart smashed against his chest and he squeezed the brake hard and he came to a juddering halt. Oh. Barney had seen something else out the corner of his eye. This time, he knew what it was. He jumped off the bike, his heart hammering and his breathing heavy. Despite the coldness of the evening, he was sweating under his riding gear. His riding gear? Yeah, because you have to have leathers, don't you, if you're on a motorbike? He sounds fit. <laughs> Do you know what? If I was... I'd want Barney in a weird... in a, in a shitty situation, because he's really taking control. Mm. I'd have had a full-on heart attack. <laughs> What, you're smashing I'd be heart? dead. Yeah, out your chest. Oh, I'd be <laughs> fucked. I do eat a lot of Himalayan salt as well, so that would be a problem. <clears throat> 
He jumped off his bike, his heart hammering and his breathing heavy. Despite the coldness of the evening, he was sweating under his riding gear. He walked a few metres, slowly and quietly back down the lane and peered into the forest to try and find what he was looking for. Hello. Barney's skin turned to ice as he swung his body around and came face to face with the woman he had seen in the dark trees minutes before. The woman was a stark contrast to her surroundings. She was wearing a white dress and her skin almost shone. It was so pale. Everything about her was pale, from her blonde hair to her shoeless feet. Everything except for her eyes. Barney couldn't take his eyes off hers. The logical part of his brain told him that, of course, she had to have eyes. But he couldn't see any evidence. (laughs) He saw black holes in her head where her eyes should be. As his skin became covered in goosebumps, he told himself, of course, she has eyes. <laughs> Again. Lynn's taken the eyeballs, has not she? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. This is where Lynn got her fucking eyeballs yeah. from. Yeah. Of course she has eyes. It was just dark. I'm so cold, the woman said. I got lost trying to get home. I just want to go home. They're going to fuck. <laughs> This is sexy as it's fuck. It's so sexy. I didn't Take see me going this way. I don't Take have any eyes. <laughs> Help me get my eyes. I just need some eyes. Barney asked, what are you doing here? Are you on your own? Is someone with you? What are you doing here in the middle of the night? The woman made Barney feel uneasy, but he wasn't about to abandon her in the woods to freeze to death. He felt like he had no choice, but the woman still wasn't answering him. She stood very still, her eyes completely black and unblinking. He couldn't tell for sure, but Barney felt like she was staring directly at him. Suddenly, the woman spoke. Take me home. (laughs) Country (laughs) road. To the place. (laughs) Where the pearls go. (laughs) I can't believe how sexy this is. This is I am. My nipples are so hard. Again. Again. And this time, (laughs) time. I'm aroused. (laughs) This time, I'm horny. Yeah, this is the horn. Anyone else? Just me? Good. Barney's still feeling incredibly uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Um, Barney felt that the last thing he wanted to do was give this woman a lift. She creeps him out. Well, she's got no fucking shoes on. <laughs> yeah. She's got a little she's dress shoeless. on. shoeless. Yeah, shoeless, bitch. Eyeless and shoeless. And the idea of him in front riding the bike while she sat behind him made him feel incredibly vulnerable. Mm. But he couldn't leave her. <laughs> mm. Oh, so vulnerable. Did she just come? <laughs> mm. Yep. <laughs> Where do you live? I'll show you, the woman said. She started walking to Barney's motorbike. Barney sighed and removed his leather jacket. He gave it to the woman and she slowly put it on. Very good of you, Barney. What's your name? Asked Barney. The woman said nothing. Just stood next to the motorbike as if waiting for Barney to get on. Barney shook his head. Fuck this. (laughs) All right, Barney. I know, calm down, come on. He just wanted to get this woman home so we could get back home into that hot bath that he'd been screaming <laughs> on. I wonder if Why he's got like bath? a bath bomb or something. Now give me an ick. Yeah. Because I like a bath, but yeah. this is really horrible. Yeah. Bonnie jumped onto the bike expecting the woman to follow his lead, but he didn't feel anything. He turned around to tell the woman to get on the bike, expecting to see, see her stood at the side of his motorbike. Ah! <laughs> what the fuck's going on there? <laughs> He it's jumps out of having his, a meltdown. He jumps, <laughs> he jumps out of his skin. <laughs> he turned around and saw the woman sat directly behind him. Her hands rested on his shoulders. He could see her, but he felt like he was on the bike all alone. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, what is this happening again? <laughs> it's really good, though. <laughs> no, keep going. Okay. Them all. He stared ahead and re- yeah, <laughs> imagine the end. <laughs> he stared ahead, revved the bike, and pulled out onto the road. He had a dreadful feeling in the pit of his stomach, like something terrible was going to happen. Oh fuck's sake! Did you hear that noise? Someone's climbing over the pod box. <laughs> I don't like it. It's okay. okay. Just gonna sip some more eggnog. He stared ahead, revved the bike and pulled out onto the road. He had a dreadful feeling in the pit of his stomach like something terrible was going to happen. That's just the train, isn't it? Next door. Barney drove whilst taking whispered directions from the woman on the back of his motorbike. Finally, the woman pointed to a house ahead. He pulled up to the house and stared at it. Surprisingly, it looked quite normal. 
Barney was expecting her to live in the Adams family mansion or with Edward Scissorhands at the top of a hill. Oh, for fuck's sake, Barney. Get an imagination. <laughs> Do like, better, Barney. Yeah, he's seen two horror films and Hilarious. that's what he expected. Yeah. Uh, but no, the house was a medium-sized detached house. <laughs> is he going to describe more of it? So, so, Have a lovely lawn. This is, this is a right move. <laughs> Barney's an estate agent for Foxton. So funny. The house is a medium-sized detached house. A yellow door with hanging plants on both sides. A big gold knocker shined to the moonlight. <laughs> a big gold knockers, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Barney felt nothing as the woman slid off her bike. Her head down, eyes to the floor. Barney said... Is this where you live? Well, you'd fucking hope so, wouldn't you? Barney wanted her to look at him and respond. For him to see her eyes and maybe he could shake off the feeling of dread. But she didn't respond. Her eyes looking at the floor. The woman walked towards the door, turned the handle and walked straight in. She didn't even need a key. In this day and age, why are you not locking your fucking doors? I'm imagining this is like the outback. Like, very rural. Oh, see, I wasn't. I was imagining community. like Clapham High Street. <laughs> <laughs> Don't imagine that. <laughs> That's more like scary than drunken this. twenty year olds be like, oh, oh on, the way to... <laughs> on the way back from Inferno. I know. Yeah, that's what I'm imagining it next to Inferno's. Mm. Which actually, Inferno means hell. Does it actually? Yeah. Oh, I think so. <laughs> so can we confirm? Um, I think it's fire, but yeah, it's linked. Fire. To... Yeah. <laughs> Fiery hell. Fire. <laughs> I was close. I really you were really close. <laughs> she walked in the door and turned. She was now facing outward, facing the street and Barney. She didn't move. Barney felt an overwhelming need to leave immediately. He jumped back on the bike and started the engine. When he turned back to the house, the door was closed and the woman was nowhere to be found. Barney drove immediately, speeding away as fast as he could to put as much distance between himself and the woman with black eyes. The next morning, <laughs> Barney woke up and the sun shined through his curtains. He remembered the night before and shivered. But everything seemed a little bit less terrifying in the light of day, mm. as it often does. With the sun radi radiating heat on his flat window, it was some... It was, oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> and, <laughs> with the You're sun radiating really well. heat through his... <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> It's like my tongue's just completely out of control. Have you got a mucky mouth? No, I haven't. <laughs> no. Mucky mouth. No, how dare you know? <laughs> Do not have one of those. Fucking hell. <laughs> I can't, I don't know what's happening to you. Maybe we can't drink next time because this is fucking dreadful. <laughs> um, he remembered the night before and shivered, but everything seemed a little less terrifying in the light of day. With the sun radiating heat through his flat window, it was a good thing too because Barney still had something to do. Shortly after getting home the night before, he'd realised something. The woman with black eyes still had his fucking jacket. Barney had wanted to leave it, but it was really expensive. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a... I, I, I don't like him. I thought you loved him. No, I don't. He he was fit. No, now I think he's a bit too sincere. Yeah, but you know what? Leather jackets are really expensive. Yeah, but she's got no eyes. <laughs> like let Yeah, go. but she lived in a detached house with a yellow front door. What yeah. can be well, what can be too plant. terrifying? Do you know what I mean? Okay, I see where this is going. He's gonna get the jacket. He's gotta get the fucking jacket. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Barney got dressed and drove back over to the house. Part of him expected it not to be there. The whole night seemed like a really bad dream. But there it was. The door. <laughs> I've written the door with the yellow door. <laughs> Just in case you can't remember what the door is. The door, the yellow door. <laughs> the house with the yellow door. There it was, the house with the yellow door. Barney walked up to the door and knocked. He felt that familiar dread creep up his body. The same feeling he had when he met the woman the night before. The door opened and on the other side was an elderly woman. She smiled at Barney politely and said, Can I help you? Barney explained about the night before. He wondered whether the elderly woman was her mother or grandmother who she might live with. Imagine if it was just a mother and you're adding another fucking 20 years onto it. <laughs> you piece of shit, get out. <laughs> the elderly woman frowned. There's no woman that lives here. Barney was about to say that he saw the woman walk into the house when his eyes flicked to the hallway and saw a photo of the woman on the wall. Relieved that obviously the same woman did live here and the old woman just must be a bit confused. That's her, there. The photo showed the woman laughing and holding onto a small blonde haired girl who looked very similar. Her eyes and skin was just as pale and Barney noted the piercing green of both of her eyes. Thank God. Mm. The woman turned to look at the photo and then turned again to look at Barney. 
Her face was white and she looked angry. What kind of person does this? That's what she said. What kind of person does this? I'm sorry. Barney's face must have conveyed his confusion appropriately because the woman's face softened. She now looked like she'd seen a ghost. She looked faint and she said, That's Emily, my daughter. She died two years ago. Oh, no. Why is every ghost of a white woman called fucking Emily? Emily. Every fucking time. Yeah, Emily. Emily Bronte. You don't get any Susie's. That's a shame, isn't it? <laughs> I'd be a great Susie's ghost. too, like, happy. <laughs> You, you can rhyme it, you can make it Susie Poozy. It's not a ghost if name. If you're listening to this, Hannah just did a really wanker type. <laughs> Wee! <laughs> Susie's like one of those people who's like. <laughs> you're the other. Susie's a happy name, isn't it? It is quite a happy it's name. Like it's like Susie. You're I'm not even so have a ghost. Fucking Susie. <laughs> I know. <laughs> she died two years ago. Oh, shit. Barney couldn't say a word, he couldn't think. He ran away from the house as fast as he could. He couldn't believe what was happening. At the forefront of his mind, a voice was screaming, It can't be real! It's a sick, <laughs> it's a sick joke! It is cannot be real! This is Barney's... This is Barney's... Uh, in a monologue. In a monologue, yeah. <laughs> but really, Barney knew. He remembered the dark holes in place of her eyes. He remembered not feeling the weight of the woman as she climbed on and off of the motorbike. And now he knew why. Because she was never really there at all. Oh, Emily. Barney. Barney thought, why did I just go? <laughs> Barney. <laughs> Take me Barney in your bath. <laughs> you just want to bathe with Barney. Oh, no. <laughs> what do you mean, no, no? Well, don't say Rude. that. Rude. <laughs> oh, Barney. Get your bath bombs and your essential oils. <laughs> I'm going to get in that goddamn bath. I just okay. don't think... Bathing with someone else is that sexy. Oh, it's fucking... It's, it's the worst thing. It's horrible. Ever. It's a bath. Yeah. It's not You're a bathing swimming in, pool. In, it's mucky. Yeah, it's so... It's muckier than mucky. your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> and that is fucking That's, mucky. <laughs> <laughs> it made me feel a bit sick, to be honest. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, God. It's Sponsored all Sponsored by Bucky. <laughs> <laughs> now, mucky Bucky. Mucky. Yeah. That's Merry what the name Christmas. of the podcast is. The episode's going to be called... Mackie Bucky. Finally got there. We, I knew that had happened. Great. Um, that's a good story. I like it. I haven't it. finished it. Oh, for <laughs> <sake>. <laughs> I mean, I was just being polite. That's a but... good story. I like it. It's not finished. Fuck! <laughs> I've got to listen to more of this shit. No, no. It's, it's about really to come good. to a head. Okay. It's about to come to a head. Mm. Um, Barney thought of nothing else the days after. He woke up in the middle of the night plagued by the image of the woman, her eyes contrasting with her thin, pale face. He didn't sleep and he didn't eat. Eventually, he decided to research the woman's death, because that always fucking helps. Mm. It didn't take him long. He found out that the woman's name was Emily Jones. Oh, Emily Jones. <laughs> <laughs> She'd been driving her and her daughter, Casey, a couple of years ago. They were hit by a car. The person who had hit them had panicked. He'd hidden her body... <laughs> Deep in the woods, which Grey Hill Lane ran through. Why have hoping you found that so that funny? Because it's like, ah, shit! Right, the best option now. <laughs> just up. an accident. Yeah. So, like, you could have just called the police and been like, do you know what, we've had a collision. We've had an RTA. Yeah. Yeah, but instead, it's which like... Which is a road I'm, traffic accident. I actually didn't know what that was. I just went, yeah, yeah. I can tell. Yeah. Your eyes kind of just went, <laughs> dead. Uh huh. I, I, I'm so glad you I picked up tell, on that. I can I already like... tell when you don't know what the fuck's going on, <laughs> which is a lot of the time. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have resting no thoughts face. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up now. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, when Emily's, Emily's body had been recovered, her eyes had been eaten by bugs and small animals. Oh, there's a theme with eyeballs, isn't there? I did make a note, or Lynn came and fucking took him. Mm. All that were left in her head were dark black holes. Whilst Barney was reading the article alone in his home, he saw a flash of white in his peripheral vision. He knew exactly what it was. She was still there. Barney decided to go to Emily's grave <laughs> and pay his respects, hoping that that would get Emily off his back. <laughs> he went that very afternoon. It was rainy and gloomy. Typical, Barney muttered. 
as he got off his motorbike and stared at the entrance to the cemetery where Emily's body was buried. It looked huge. He was wondering how he was ever going to find the right gravestone, but he didn't have to wait for long. In the distance, he saw something red and black draped over a tombstone in the distance. His heart pounded as he made his way over to it. His mouth got drier and drier as he started to realise what it was. His motorcycle jacket. The last time he had seen it, it had been on a ghost. Shit. As Barney reached out and touched it, he heard a whisper in his ear. Hello. <gasps> oh. The end. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. So she draped the jacket yeah, over, 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 over her it. own grave, mm -hmm. knowing that he'd come and find it. And now they're probably going to have sex. Yeah, it's a good story. I feel like um, I was I was laughing too much at Barney being hot and a bit weird. Yeah, I and mean, it was incredibly it sexy, wasn't it? That was great. Thank you. Would you like another story? Yes, please. Okay, here we go. Oh, by the way, boo. <laughs> um, Emily Jones. Emily, is that you? Emily, um, I have a notebook that has a ghost on the front cover, okay. and it says boo. So that's nice, isn't it? Yeah. On Brand. Okay, let's see what you make of this. Ghost story number two. I'm a former police officer. It's time to share the most disturbing case I've ever handled. Has he got a title? Police story. <laughs> Have you just made that up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Okay. I'm Officer Bradley. I retired from the force 10 years ago at the ripe age of 50. That's quite early to retire. That is re that's incredibly early. The perks in the salary must be out of yeah. this world. Unless Officer Bradley's seen so much shit. Maybe he's, he's like, retired and gone to a different job because he's bored. Yeah, fine, we'll go with that. I retired from the force 10 years ago at the ripe age of 50. I'll begin with a story from my 20 years as a police officer that stuck with me like a deep thorn. January 17th, 2005. We got a call about a woman who had locked herself in her bathroom. She said her boyfriend was trying to kill her. My partner Mason and I arrived at the house on the end of the street. This is so fucking American, isn't it? So Mason. Mason. Mason, sidewalk. The lamppost flickered yellow and the wind danced the trees and bushes. <laughs> <laughs> the wind danced in the bushes. <laughs> it's easy, cut me. <laughs> I thought this reading thing was easy until I tried it. <laughs> Oh, okay. I, 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 sorry, I, I laughed at you and now you can laugh at yeah. me. Yeah. Amazing. The clouds were thick and the air ice cold. We took position at the front door. We knocked. Police, open up. Okay, I'm doing an American accent for them now. Gonna have to carry that on. <laughs> Only the sound of wind chimes. Is there a lot of um, dialogue? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you excited? I don't know. Oh dear. Yeah, carry on. Mason kicked the door open with all the force he could muster. We scanned the house downstairs, no one in sight. Clear. You hear that? I said. Mason looked up at the stairs. Gentle cries. A woman, so subtle and as if muffled behind a door in a room. Thought she was supposed to be downstairs. Said Mason. <laughs> this accent is the worst American it's so accent bad. ever. It's so bad. <laughs> it's almost. From which sexy. um from which state is this from? Um America. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you do that in a Mexican accent? <laughs> Because they Racist. have rights too. <laughs> <laughs> they need representation. Oh my God. America. America. <laughs> I'm in America. He was like, you know those, you know those mouse films? <laughs> when they were like... Like the great, No, like the great... <laughs> not the great escape. Like, what is it? The, oh, the Disney um, films. You know when they all go to like the big city? Like Bernard mind? and Bianca kind what? of What? No. <laughs> Who the fuck are Bernard and you Bianca? Don't, wow, okay. I have no idea. Who What's Bernie it called? Can, can you can you find it? Because that's gonna piss me off. What are they? Mice? Like, I like to be in America. <laughs> you know what I mean? Is this racist? Yeah. <laughs> and that's why we're doing this podcast. Okay, so that's Bernard and Bianca. You. Oh yeah, that oh. is them. That's who I meant. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> who the fuck's Bernard and Bianca? Wow. Wow, Barney. She gave me a very masculine <laughs> voice. Who <laughs> the fuck is Bernard and Bianca? Ah. Cheers for that. <laughs> Feels so saucy. Feels so beautiful. Oh no! Feels so pretty. Anyway, back to Bradley, guys. Sorry, who's Bradley? 
<laughs> Officer Bradley, you've not been listening, you can. Oh, Jesus. Bradley, Bianca and Bernard. <laughs> my name, sorry. Barney. Go on, yeah. Okay. Not Barney. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> uh, I thought she was supposed to be downstairs, said Mason. We made our way upstairs. Ma'am, it's okay, I began. You're safe now. No one's going to hurt you. The crying stopped abruptly, as if someone hit pause. Then it started again. But he's still here, replied the woman from inside the bedroom. My partner and I checked the entire house. No one's here, ma'am. You're safe. Downstairs, the front door slammed shut. My partner and I gave each other a gaze and I could notice his brow sweating despite the cold night. I used my head to (laughs) justify... It's been a very sweaty, heavy podcast so far, hasn't it? Everyone's sweating. Both characters have been incredibly sweaty. Yeah, they're disgusting. (laughs) Um, I used my head to gesture for him to take a look. He stood from atop the stairs and looked down at the front door. Just the wind, I think, he said. What was that accent? That was was sorry. (laughs) It was American again, and if you can't get on board... America! Then you need to leave. Just the wind, I think. You need to leave. Leave. You gotta leave, girl. Leave. <laughs> leave. Sorry. Right now. Yeah. Okay. Just the wind, I think, he said. Then a gentle voice came from inside the bathroom. Are you sure, Officer Bradley? The woman asked. The entire night at that scene, neither my partner Mason nor I used our names out loud. Not once. Ma'am, do you need help or not? Mason was agitated. We need to know you're okay, so step back, because I'm kicking it in. A part of me believes Mason was more eager to see the woman's face, to find out who she was and how she knew what she did, more than he was concerned for her safety. What? Sorry, that sentence. What? (laughs) Sorry. Billy Big Balls, all right. (laughs) Fucking going to kick down the door. Yeah. He wanted peace of mind. No, hold on, hold on, I said. She might be sitting right by the door. We don't want to hurt her. Then she said it. Officer Bradley, tell Mason that if he touches this door, I will visit his family late at night and break down a door of my own. <laughs> the woman's voice was an octave deeper when she said She's that. She's like mine. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Who the fuck are Bianca and Bernard? <laughs> Bianca, Bernard, Barney and Bradley. And <laughs> person. I never understood the expression, white as a ghost. Do people actually turn that pale in the face? (laughs) In the face? I learned that they did, in fact, when I saw my partner react to those sinister words. I couldn't stop him from kicking in that bedroom door this time, but when he did, we found nobody inside. There wasn't a window above the shower, which to escape, or another door to go through, and yet we were certain we just had a full conversation with a woman behind the door. We scanned the entire house, including the backyard, one last time, inch by inch. Nothing. My partner and I communicated non-verbally the rest of the night, so when it was time to leave, we gave each other a look and left the house without even looking back. Now, this is the part of the story I haven't told anyone. Not even Mason. We were sufficiently disturbed, so I didn't want to tell him what I'm about to tell you. When we left the house, I drove us back to the station that night. He probably thought I didn't notice, but his hands were shaking too much to drive comfortably, and he doesn't drink coffee. No eggnog for him. (laughs) Only other reason. (laughs) Yeah, he's shaking with fright. As I reversed the cruiser out the street... Cruiser. As I reversed the cruiser out the street, Mason didn't look back at the house, but the truth is, I did and I sincerely wished that I hadn't. I looked and squinted at a dustbin by the side of the house. Why? <laughs> Why, please? To see a strange, dark figure crouching by the gate. Oh, you and these fucking crouching! As if watching us leave. And as we finally drove away, as the house became more and more distant in our mirror, the figure slowly stood itself up. And I'll swear, even today, that as it stood up, it didn't stop rising until its head peeked over the roof of that two-storey house. (laughs) The end. Peaky, peaky. (laughs) More peeking. Um... What? (laughs) Are we all terrified? No, I I am. I... (laughs) 
I'm confused. Now, I'm confused by that ending because I, I, was, I was really excited reading it and then I did get to the end and think, what she just stretched yeah so say this is say that say this is is the house yeah this is the laptop for yeah people who can't see so she's just she was so these are the bins here yeah so is she just like <laughs> oh there yeah, yeah. And then peaky peaky and then peaking. peaking it's like like she's sort of like mr tickle <laughs> oh that makes sense you know, <laughs> you know what i mean yeah she, like a uh, stretch armstrong have you seen how my eyes shut down again? Yeah, I did. I was like, she's not got a <laughs> fucking got a fun clue. Who's Do you know what Stretch Armstrong is, Barney? Yeah, yeah, hang on. Me and Barney get all the references. I don't. I live under a bin. <laughs> under a, <laughs> a bin? Rock. Finally, we found out the reason for your mucky mouth. <laughs> Living under bins will do that Bin juice. Bin juice. Why did you say that? Bin juice. Oh, we found the new jingle. <laughs> Spin juice. We had a bitch going to kill me. My name's Anna. And I don't, I got fucking monster from I, Yorkshire. I apparently sound like fat bastard. So. <laughs> and I am sure you do. I want my big butt ribs. <laughs> They're coming to get me. That was so funny. <laughs> okay, so I think I understand what happened. Could she not have been behind the bins because she's a bit weird? And then he just saw a bird up top. Well, yeah, but well, how does she know their names? Explain me that. They probably did say it at some point. Who? The police officers when they were going upstairs. Well, like Mason, Officer Bradley. Well, yeah, because if me and you were like going into a house to save someone, which by the way will never happen. I'm not oh, I think it would situation. happen. I'm very heroic. I'd be outside in the car. Um, yeah, I'm very heroic. I am actually. Um, I'd be like, "Who's taking the elephant?" Do you know what I mean? I wouldn't just. We wouldn't just be inside. I'd be like, "Take the take." You yeah, but you're up. you're not a police officer, <laughs> okay? So I'd like to say you haven't gone through formal training. Well, and I think they're like t- d- debatable to me to you. They're like, okay, officer. Officer one, I don't think, you know, he did say. It's easier to say your fucking name. Maybe. So you think that actually she was by the bin being. I like think none of this ever happens. Yeah, it might just be a fictional ghost story, um, which, to be fair, is what we're doing. So. I do think, I do yeah. think that there's a possibility that this happened, but I don't think that the woman grew to the size of a house. Oh, yeah, that bit is I quite think... unbelievable, isn't it? <laughs> you can understand why I'm struggling with it. Yeah, Mr. Tickle is, is a bit. It's a bit of weird. A stretch. That's why we're comedians. Oh, my God. Excellent. Gold. Good reference. Gold, gold, gold. Um, <coughs> I enjoyed it, though, nonetheless. The Thank tension you. was uh, built. I really hope that our listeners are quivering in here. <laughs> yeah. But, hey, should we go on to the next story? Yes. Okay, do you have one? I have our celebrity segment. Oh, lovely. Yes, please. Last week, we did Ariana Grande. <laughs> This week, I'd like to talk about the time that Demi Lovato sang to an unidentified (laughs) object. Oh, yes, please. Okay, so, I don't know if you know this, but Demi Lovato, whose pronouns, by the way, are now they, them, she, her. So, we can basically, you know, don't... All four of them. Don't at us. Okay. Yeah, we can do any. Okay. Um, So, basically, Demi Lovato fucking loves... Well, actually, she like... Can you actually just remind me who that is? Demi Lovato, she did all the... (laughs) She did all the Disney, uh, all the Disney films. Have you got? Can we have a picture, what? Barney, please? Yeah, yeah. Fucking Barney's working here, isn't he today? <laughs> <laughs> but you can't wait to get home to that hot bath. There she is. That's Demi Lovato. What does she do again? Then she's a singer. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's Demi Lovato. So Demi Lovato is, and I, I do feel she's like kind of she's kind of nearly died a lot. I oh think. really? Well, she took a lot of drugs and nearly had an overdose okay. and um she feels that now because that because of that she can now communicate with other beings but she's more interested in aliens but she seems to think that aliens and ghosts are quite closely connected oh, like robbie williams sorry <laughs> robbie williams is obsessed with aliens is he yeah, yeah then Demi, yeah they should meet up for a coffee dems and robs dems and robs because they she loves it um, so she started. She she started this TV show called Unidentified. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that noise. Mm. Was so I wish I hadn't made direct eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Barney are feeling wildly. <laughs> <laughs> 
So she basically, yeah, she started this mm. TV show called Unidentified, which I think also was a little bit of a publicity stunt because this was just before she changed her identity. Okay. So I think, you know, I'm... It was I'm, in the run-up to that. Yeah. But that might just be me being a cynic. So anyway, she gets a mate, Matthew, and a sister who's called Dallas, which is the most fucking insane thing I've ever heard. <laughs> And they all go on a ghost. Go on a ghost tour. This whole, this whole um, TV series follows mm. them on a ghost tour. So they go to a place called Vulture City, uh, and it's an old mining ranch. And the owners are like, "We think the mining um, disturbed the ghosts and the aliens and all this shit." But they go there, and a sister is. Inc- she's like, a sister said um, that she. Uh, used to do paranormal investigations with my mom, which means I would go and investigate the paranormal. <laughs> Captain <laughs> Obvious. It's amazing. And also she's wearing a black choker to prove it. Because uh, as yeah. we know, if you like ghosts, you wear black chokers and yeah. netting and lace. And that's that. Um, so the so they go to this mining town and the owners, um, I think they are bullshitting hard. I think they just wanted... Demi Lovato's come and film a TV show there because mm-hmm. it all sounds like bullshit. They said that they can't count the amount of times that they've seen something paranormal. I just can't count. Can't count it. Countless times. <laughs> seen paranormal activity too many times. Um, they talk of levitation of objects. They talk... The woman says that she often on the property sees almond-shaped... Sorry, not uh, almond. Almonds. No. No. Nuts. No. <laughs> she, she sees diamond-shaped grey figures. Oh, like which is basically what we think aliens are, aren't they? Like the diamond head. <laughs> You're like that's awesome. You know what I mean? Like the diamond. Barney, Google aliens, and the first image that will come up will be so. There's nothing to do with diamonds. They've got, they got a, a diamond bubble, shaped a head. head. Um, I'm not sure. I describe well, that as a diamond. Yeah, there. Well, that one. This kind of shit. Yeah, that's it. Okay. You yeah. know what I mean? And like a big. Yeah. Yeah. Funky diamond with big eyes. That's it. We'll put that on the yeah. page, maybe, so that everyone see it. <laughs> that's <laughs> what they think the aliens are. Okay. Um, I just like to see them all the time. And then, because Demi Lovato is so obsessed with aliens, she's honestly like... <laughs> she looks like she's about to fucking come. She loves it oh so much. Um, her sister in this whole thing is my favourite character. Dallas. Because she, yeah, Dallas. She's off her fucking head. Mm-hmm. She's off her head. So they get a couple of, like, um, ghost hunters and medicine men to come to the side. Medicine men? Yeah, to do like... Who are they, doctors? <laughs> well, no, they're like, they're, like, uh, they're like wizards, I think. Oh, yeah, that's Do you know what I mean? Up. Like, they're not... They use stuff from the land to, like, create protective spells. Like, like um, shaman? Yeah. A shaman? I guess. Okay. Anyway, so they go off and do that. Um, and they start, they start using all this equipment. It's going fucking crazy, right? Demi's off in, in one room with a mate, Matthew, and one of the ghost hunters. Yeah. And this thing's going fucking crazy. And they're like, are you, because it used to be a brothel as well. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. It used to be a brothel. And the three women that were in the brothel who like ran it and were prostitutes in the brothel were called Carmen, Daisy, and fucking, I don't know, Scarlet or something like that. Oh. Um, d- two of them are still alive, but one of them's dead. And she's called Carmen. And they're like, Carmen? Is that you? And then this thing starts going crazy. And like, it's Carmen, it's Carmen, it's Carmen, it's Carmen. And then the, the Demi's like, do you not like men? <laughs> I'm not sure where that came from. Okay. Um, and she and then the thing goes crazy. It's like, <laughs> like that. What so goes then crazy? It's like this little piece of equipment that can talk. That, like, what? Can't talk, but it starts making weird noises. Oh, like a, like a radio e. Yeah, like time. when a spirit is trying to communicate. Mm. Um, and it, do you know what? It's pretty good. Because it does start going mad, and then the blokes are like, of it? "Yeah, it's on, it's on, it's on." Uh, hey, you. Okay. You can watch the whole, the whole series on Hey You. So it, I actually enjoyed it. I've only watched the first episode because mm-hmm. um, I didn't have time. Um, so anyway, it starts going mad, and then the men are like, "We're going to leave so that you can just communicate with them on your own." Because we feel like she doesn't like men, and I don't know where they got this from, but I feel like it was just an opportunity to get Demi Lovato alone in a room. With a ghost. Right. So they leave. Okay. And completely out of nowhere, she's like, oh no, she says, she says, do you have trauma? And then the thing starts going mad and she's like, the ghost has trauma. <laughs> and then she comes back in and then completely out of nowhere goes, Carmen, do you like to sing? Oh no. What happens then? And Carmen's like, oh <laughs> 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 Through this, it's got thing. a lovely voice. Yeah, you're beautiful. Beautiful, 
tones. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, she loves to sing. And then one of the men completely, you know, on an office own back goes, Demi, you should sing to her. <laughs> and Demi's like, oh my God, I couldn't possibly. But every time I'm emotional, I like to sing Skyscraper. What? Yeah. Have you heard Skyscraper? No. You know what I mean, Barney? You can take everything I am like I'm made of glass. Like I'm made of paper. Do you know what I mean? You sound like you're having a breakdown. <laughs> so anyway, she starts singing and every all the ghost hunters outside are like, wow. <laughs> and I'm like, Tony Lamont is just singing in the room to a fucking ghost. Anyway, the best part of it is, meanwhile, mm. Demi's sister, Dallas, is in a different fucking room with another ghost hunter and they both hear Demi Lovato singing. They're like, oh my God, mm. do you hear that singing? <laughs> so they think one of the ghosts it's singing, but actually it's Demi Lovato in the next room. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, do you hear that? It's <laughs> fucking incredible. <laughs> oh my God, it's made me want to go ghost hunting so much. I think we should. But Demi Lovato is just like, she looks off and like she couldn't give a shit and then someone men mentions aliens and she keeps calling them ETs. Oh no! Well, extra. Yeah, and I suppose that just makes sense. But I just imagine loads of little ETs. Mm, yeah, like. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> that was a really good impression. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Did you? <laughs> Can you say that like, ET phone home? ET phone home. Oh fuck off! <laughs> Maybe that's my little like. That was amazing. Do it again. ET phone home. Oh my god. <laughs> Is that my little hidden so talent? So good. I love that. Oh, well done. Oh, thank you. Well done. I suppose you need a mucky mouth for that. It sounds yeah, like, that wah, sounded wah, wah. like my eggnog mouth. That's great. Honestly, that was really good. Really <laughs> good. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, Demi Lovato and Ghosts. Wow. Thanks. Okay, so she sang at a radio in a room alone. <laughs> <laughs> and a sister. <laughs> also, you would hope that you, if you're famous for singing, mm. you'd hope your fucking sister would know it was you. Well, yeah. You go, well, that sounds like Demi singing. You wouldn't yeah, go. De Demi singing. <laughs> Ghosts singing. But you'd probably, you're, you're probably in a heightened state of. Yeah. Not arousal. <laughs> Don't know. But scared. Maybe if you're Barney on your motorbike in a cold lane. <laughs> yeah. Fit Barney. Um, that's, that was great. Thanks. Yeah. Demi. A yeah. woman who I can't really, I can't really picture her face, even though you have shown me it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see her eyebrows. Does she have eyes? Mine or Demi? <laughs> <laughs> no, Demi's. <laughs> when I laugh, I can't see my eyeballs. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. Yeah, yours disappear. They go. They go. <gasps> it's weird, isn't You're it? You're like the black eyed woman. <laughs> um, we've reached the point in the podcast where. Um, one of us is going to get haunted. Uh, this this week, um, we're going to play a little game where Hannah is going to find out how she's going to die. Well, I don't really think you need a game for that because I'm a bit of a hedonist, so it's going to be anything that is fun. Oh, do like you think? smoking, drinking, eating. Well, that's what you think. I think that's Let's what's play good. the game. Yeah. All right, fine, fine. Okay. I'm so excited. Let's dim the lights. Okay. Concentrate. Concentrate. What the fuck Concentrate on what I'm saying. Ow. People are dying. <laughs> Children are crying. Concentrate. Concentrate. Concentrate on what I'm saying. Crack an egg on your head. What the <laughs> 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 Let's go crumb down and crack an egg on your head. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone that can't, <laughs> Susie's just punching me in the back. Crack an egg on your head. Let the yolk run down. And then touch you with a broken Concentrate, concentrate, concentrate on what I'm saying. People are dying. Children are crying. Concentrate on what I'm saying. I'm Twist your hands on your shoulders. What? And let them on your... <laughs> Squeeze... <laughs> Squeeze an orange. On your shoulder. Sounds like breakfast. Let the juice run down. Let the juice drip down. Concentrate. Concentrate on what I'm saying. Um, stick ten needles in your Ow. side. <laughs> Let the blood drip down. Stick ten needles in your side. Let the blood drip down. Um, hang on. <laughs> Stab a knife in your back. Ow. Let the blood drip down. 
Let the blood drip down. Stab a knife in your back. Let the blood drip down. Um, concentrate. All of that. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Uh, doesn't feel very authentic. Hang on. Wrap a rope round your neck. Oh. Uh, wrap like it that. till it's tight. Wrap a rope round your neck and pull. Oh, my God. I actually feel like my breathing is being constricted. You're standing on a building. You're out on the ledge. Oh, my you're God. You're feeling very dizzy. I am. And you're close to the edge. I feel it. And someone pushes you. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Open your eyes. What colour do you see? Blue. <gasps> I think it's the curtain. Oh, blue. my God. You see blue. Okay. She saw the blue. The curtains are blue. No, no, no. You, you have to think of the colour that was in your I head. I think it was blue. Blue means... Oh, my God. They will drown in water. Fuck's sake! Yeah. Yeah. That was really scary. Was it? The end. Yeah. Well, did I you just, enjoy that? Yeah, you scared me. I know. I don't know if I did it quite right, but you did see blue. <laughs> My favourite bit was um, concentrate and all of that shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And you didn't see any other colours? No, I don't think so. Sure? No, I don't know. Okay. I think it was blue. Well, yeah, blue. Um, Means they will drown in water, it says here. So watch Fucking out, hell. Hannah. Be careful. Be careful in the sea, in the local Lido. If I if it's raining, die soon of drowning, then that's terrifying. This gives this podcast loads of clout. To mm, mm. So I would, you know, if I do die, then at least I've taken one for the team. Well, that was great. Um, we have maybe time have for one last time? story. On, yeah, Shall we? Okay. Let's hear our last ghost story. Encounters at my 140-year-old church. Is that the title? Yes. <laughs> and then it starts with, so for context, this encounter takes place at the 140-year-old church I work as a pastor at. Pastor? Pastor. 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 Mm. <laughs> Apparently. That was that a Mexican accent again. <laughs> I'm very Mexican. Okay. Apparently... When the second floor was being built in 1976, a worker fell through the roof and landed on a girl who was sitting in a pew at service one day, where both of them died. Since I work as one of the two pastors, is that how you say it? Yeah, pastor. pastors. Um, I have to go to the church every late Saturday night to prepare the church at the same time as the cleaning crew. I used to not believe in ghosts until these encounters convinced me otherwise. Down in the basement of the church, there is a storage room area, accessed by a padlock. In this room, there are doors leading to other rooms, including the water heater and the piping. One of these rooms leads to this hallway, about five foot wide and 40 feet long. This whole hallway is filled with old chairs and pews. Anyway, one day, I went down there to grab a chair because one of the chairs upstairs broke, and at the other end of the hallway, there is just a man standing there, looking at me. Now, here's the weird thing. The only way in and out of that room is through the locked door to the hallway, which only the staff members and I know the code to. I just unlocked it. He didn't look like a staff member, and unless he climbed over the chairs, there's no natural way he could have gotten to the end of the hallway. I called out to him, and then he just vanished. I later checked the security camera footage. There's a camera in every room because a lot of recent robberies had been taking place. And he'd been there since the start of the footage, just stood there. Oh. Which was at 8 p.m. the day before when motion was detected. I didn't open that door until 9.30 p.m. the day after the motion was detected, so it made no sense. What, so he's just been there for like a day? Mm-hmm. Just standing there, waiting. A few weeks after the previous encounter I explained, I was there around 10.20 a.m. preparing for the church service, which starts at 11, and I had to grab something for the kids' art storage room. When I first got upstairs, I saw that same man standing in the room at the end of the hallway. He had his back to me. I went over and when I got within five feet of the room, he vanished again. I went into the room and then as I walked in, I heard what sounded like a little girl who whispered the words, You're mine. Oh, uh, oh. Uh. And the door started to slowly close and uh. the lights started flickering. Uh. Let's just say this terrified me. I darted out the room and I literally jumped down most of the steps on the stairs and ran outside. This is when things got really strange. Later that night when I arrived at the church to clean, I looked up in the top floor window and I saw a little girl and a man standing at the window. They both smiled and waved at me and I saw the little girl mouth the words, You're mine. 
After I saw that, I decided to head home, asking the cleaning crew to finish up, and I promised myself never to go back to the church at night. Oh! Oh! oh. What else sounds like looks like your mind? Because you know, I love you, so elephant juice. What? Maybe she, you know, you know, if you can, I was elephant juice. Oh, really? It, like, it sounds like you're saying, "I love you." Try it now. Kind of. No. A little bit. A- elephant juice. <laughs> elephant elephant juice. juice. Um. So, what else sounds looks like your mind? Your mind. Um. Oh, you're a, you're a fine. You're you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Yeah, maybe that. Yeah. No, because of your, your mind. Your Oh, my. Me. Oh, mine. Whore. Whore me. <laughs> that's, that's it. Whore me. That's what it was. It's not your, it's not your mind. It's whore me. <laughs> Who, me? Whore me. Whore me. Whore me. Your mind. But where's his Whore me. Whore me. Whore me. Corn. Call me. Corn. <laughs> Call me bastard. Corn. Corny. Corn. Bine. <laughs> Corn, but corn wine, corn, corn wine, corn, corn wine, corn wine. <laughs> That's it. That was really corn wrong. wine or whore me. <laughs> so, and um, please write in with what you think she was actually saying. <laughs> Try it at home, Brilliant. mouth your mind, and see what comes out. Loved it. Um, that well, was loads of fun. I enjoyed that a lot. I didn't really enjoy the. I'm, I'm really not looking forward to getting drowned. I know. I'm sorry. Was that quite a scary one? It Maybe... was a bit, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you are being haunted currently. Yeah. So it's the least you could do to find out about it's, your death. Yeah. And who knows? It could be when I'm like 150. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Probably by, not. By I'm incredibly unhealthy. Modern things happen. Yeah. You might live a long time. I'm looking forward to it, mate. Okay. Well, um, that was episode two. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, you can find us on at Ghost Huns Pod on Instagram. Oh yeah, we have fucking TikTok. We have Meads. Ghost Huns Pod at gmail dot com if you want to write in with a story, and uh, we'll we'll catch you next week for episode three. Thank you so much, Elephant Juice. You all, mm. Elephant Juice. You all. Oh me. Goodbye. <laughs> Corn wine. <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye. 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 <laughs>